Today I have the pleasure of being with Craig Sherba. He is the President and COO for Energizer Resources. How are you today, Craig? I'm excellent. Thank you, Tracy. Craig, there is no question in my mind that Energizer is one of the top five graphite plays in the world, period. And for those of you at Investor Intel that may not be familiar with the Madagascar-based graphite resource, can you give us a bit of an overview? Certainly. We have a 140 million ton resource in Madagascar, 100 million tons of which is measured and indicated. So this is one of the largest graphite deposits in the world. Okay. It's one of the largest graphite deposits in the world. Um, and uh, in addition to that, you most recently put out a news release about your Molo graphite project and the flakes. Yes. Do you want to talk to us about the flakes for a moment? Yeah, most certainly. Well, graphite, obviously, it's not just about the content of the carbon or the graphite content, but the size of the flakes. So graphite is priced based on the size of the flakes and the carbon content. Uh, the graphite flake that we have in Madagascar is about 44% large flake graphite. So this is the graphite that's used in the high-end technological applications, the lithium-ion batteries, uh, the real kind of high-end, uh, high, I guess, high-market uh, type of a graphite product. Okay, and in addition to that, you're well, you're on, you're arguably an advanced stage graphite play. Can you talk to us about your, uh, how close you are to production? Uh, well, we're just about three months away, I guess, from a bankable feasibility study. So by Q4 of this year, November, December, will be completed the bankable feasibility study. And then after that, it's about 12 to 16 months uh, for production. Recently, I read that you had a number of senior management players that were stationed in Asia. Can you talk to me a little bit about what you might be doing there? I'm guessing end user agreements? Yes. Well, it's not just Asia we've been targeting. We've been targeting North America as well as Europe. Uh, but we recently had a team in uh, Japan, South Korea, and China uh, basically solidifying agreements with uh, individuals over there because obviously we have to have a home for the graphite once we get into production. So it's not just the Asian market, it's North American and European players that we're looking at uh, talking with as well. Okay, there's a lot of buzz about the Tesla uh, gigafactories and how that might affect uh, uh, many of the graphite companies in North America. How does that affect you or does that affect you? Well, if the, uh, the Tesla Gigafactory comes into play, they will produce more than twice as many batteries as are in production right now, lithium-ion batteries. So it'll have a, a huge impact on the marketplace. Uh, graphite, a large portion of a lithium-ion battery, of course, is uh, consisting of graphite. And this is very, very high-purity graphite. So this is kind of a technologically advanced uh, type of a product that goes into a technologically advanced vehicle like the Tesla. So uh, this is very exciting times because we're really looking at a paradigm shift. Uh, not only in the graphite market, but in the automobile market. So it's nice to be in a resource play, I guess, it's at the front end of this kind of technological uh, split. And for those of you, of course, that may not be familiar with uh, some of the uh, challenges, perhaps, in being in Madagascar, can you talk to our audience about that? Yeah, certainly. Well, we've been in Madagascar since 2007. We've seen uh, three different governments, I guess, come and go. Uh, recently, there was, oh, about four years ago, there was a change in the government. Uh, the president was deposed non-democratically. Uh, that has recently been rectified. There's been a democratically elected government. This is about eight months ago now. Uh, that has been sanctioned by the United Nations, the African Union. Uh, the United States has actually given them preferred uh, trade status as well. So uh, Madagascar is open for business, and they're really kind of looking to make up for lost time. Uh, right now being uh, kind of a pro-business type of an environment. Well, I've noticed that uh, several geopolitical experts from Eric Margolis to Alessandro Bruno have been talking about why they like Madagascar. So you do have a lot of support. And of course, in your next six months, what should shareholders expect? What kind of benchmarks are you looking to achieve? Well, obviously, we're looking to finish the technical benchmarks of the bankable feasibility study. Uh, coupled with that, however, we're also looking at solidifying offtake agreements uh, with end users. Uh, and we're looking at different kind of uh, methodologies to maximize shareholder value. So we don't want to be diluting the company anymore uh, by that. What we'd like to be able to do is set up, uh, I guess, offtake agreements and kind of have people pay for portions of offtake going forward. Well, thank you very much for joining us today, Craig. We really appreciate it. Well, thank you very much for having me, Tracy.